Hello, welcome back to Charlie's Garage. So today's topic, we're gonna to be talking about diesel fuel systems. There are three popular fuel systems that are being used today. So those are the three that we're going to focus on. So I've got some components here that come from each of those three different fuel systems and we're gonna talk about them. So the first fuel system we're gonna talk about, this is the injector for it. And it is called, um, Low pressure common rail is the colloquial term, but it's uh, more accurately referred to as electronic unit injection. So electronic unit injection, you can see, is gonna be different from the other two fuel systems that we're gonna discuss, because if you look at the other two injectors, this has a big spring on it and these two don't. So we're gonna talk about how all three systems are controlled and how they're actuated. So we're gonna start with low pressure common rail which is EUI, electronic unit injection. But we're also going to discuss this guy right here. This is a HUI injector, H-E-U-I, uh, which stands for hydraulically actuated electronic unit injection. And then we're going to talk about high pressure common rail. Uh, so let's start with what do they all have in common? And that is how they're controlled. All three of these, the metering and timing of when the fuel gets injected and how much fuel gets injected is controlled electronically. That right there is pretty much the limits to what we have in common with the three. So all three, the computer is telling it when to inject and how much to inject. When we talk about actuation, however, that is what develops the pressure in the system or lets the fuel actually inject in the cylinder. So that's a little bit different than how it's controlled. So like I said, we're gonna start with electronic unit injection. Electronic unit injection out of the three is one of the older uh, models out there. And um, if you look at it, like I said earlier, it has the spring on it. So on this type of injection system, your, one of your camshafts is going to have a cam lobe specifically for pushing the plunger down inside this injector. So this will have a rocker arm, just like the intake and exhaust valves have a rocker arm that pushes this down. When the plunger inside this gets pushed down by the rocker arm, it squeezes the fuel that's on the bottom side of that plunger. As pressure develops from that plunger being pushed down, that pressure actually lifts the little pintle inside here up, which is what seals this and keeps it from dripping. So when you overcome the spring that holds it in that closed position with fuel pressure, it pushes, the, the, pushes it up and then allows it to inject fuel into the cylinder. So this is, uh, mechanically actuated because it uses a rocker arm, but it also is electronically controlled. There's solenoids in here that determine when the motion of this is actually gonna develop fuel pressure. If the solenoid in here remains open, then squeezing the fuel doesn't develop any pressure because it just pushes the fuel out of the injector into the fuel rail. But when the computer decides it's time to inject fuel, the solenoid in here will close the fuel has no escape and then it gets pressurized and injected. So this thing can cycle that on and off during one stroke of that cam lobe. You could go from fueling, not fueling, fueling, not fueling multiple times in one sequence. All right, so that's electronic unit injection. This is also considered to be a low pressure fuel system. The difference between a high pressure fuel system and a low pressure fuel system is you're considering what is the pressure of the fuel when it arrives at the injector. If we think about what's being injected into the cylinder down here at the tip, then all diesel fuel systems would be high pressure because they're all gonna have high pressure here at the tip. This is called a low pressure system because fuel pressures are typically somewhere uh, around 70 to maybe 120, 125, give or take a little bit PSI when it arrives at the injector. At the tip, the pressures we create is in the thousands of PSI. So since the fuel arrives at this guy under relatively low pressure, that's why we consider it a low pressure fuel system. So to cap, it's electronically controlled, mechanically actuated, low pressure fuel system called low pressure common rail or electronic unit injection, EUI. The next one we're gonna talk about is the Huey. And we're gonna talk about it next because it is closely related to this guy. Uh, the primary difference between Huey, which is hydraulically actuated electronic unit injection and just plain mechanically actuated electronic unit injection is what pushes the plunger down inside. So we had a rocker arm 
right, on a cam lobe for this guy. Well, on this one, if you look at the top of it, there's a hole in it, and oil actually enters that hole. So that's why it's called Huey, hydraulically actuated electronic unit injection, is because hydraulic oil from a high pressure oil pump is going to come through a manifold that sends high pressure oil to this injector. That high pressure oil is what pushes the plunger down in this injector. Other than that, it acts very similar to this one. The only difference is that the electronically controlled part is controlling what's called an oil spill solenoid. When the computer decides that it's not time to fuel, the oil pressure just kind of dumps out of this thing and ends up back in the oil pan. But when it does decide that it's time to fuel, it'll close that oil spill solenoid. The oil pressure will push what's called the amplifier piston down. The amplifier piston has larger surface area where the oil pushes and a smaller surface area where it pushes against the fuel. This is going to cause a multiplication of pressure. So, for example, if I had a 7 to 1 surface ratio and I was pushing 3,000 PSI of oil pressure against the top of this plunger, 3 times 7 is 21,000, which is what my fuel pressure would be down here at the bottom. Right, so if 3,000 PSI of oil pressure is pushing the plunger down, the fuel that's underneath on the bottom side of this plunger or amplifier piston is creating 21,000 PSI of fuel pressure. That fuel pressure is enough to do just the same thing the other injector does, lift the pedal up off the bottom and inject the fuel. This guy relies a lot on other components though. You need to have some way to take engine oil and pressurize it to a great deal which is what this is for. It's called the high pressure oil pump. And on the back of the high pressure oil pump, we have what's called the IPR valve or injection pressure regulator. The name is kind of deceiving because when most people think injection pressure, they think of fuel pressure. But what's controlling fuel pressure in this is oil pressure. So this injector pressure regulator is controlling oil pressure. This is what it looks like if I were to take it out of the housing. So this is pulse width modulated by the computer to open and close to vary the amount of oil pressure. So when you're stepping on the throttle, the component you're controlling is actually this guy. When you want more power, you step on it. This thing's going to close up a little bit, creating more oil pressure. When you want to back off the throttle, it's going to open it up and it's going to dump some of that oil pressure and you're going to lose oil pressure. So like I said before, as oil pressure goes up and down, so does fuel pressure because of the amplifier piston in here. So this is the old school Huey guy, hydraulic electronic unit injection. So hydraulically actuated, electronically controlled. The next one we're gonna talk about is high pressure common rail. So where the Huey and the EUI guys over here are both considered low pressure fuel systems because the fuel arrives at them under a low pressure, this guy, you'll notice it doesn't have an oil hole. It doesn't have a big spring on it. There is nothing to push a plunger down in here. As a matter of fact, the seal at the bottom of this that seals the injector and closes it is spring loaded into a closed position. The fuel arrives at this injector already underneath actuation pressure. So for example, if the computer determined that you needed 26,000 PSI of fuel pressure at the tip, that's what the fuel pressure is going to be sitting inside this injector. It's waiting on a signal, so it's electronically controlled and basically electronically actuated also. It receives the signal from the computer, an electromagnetic solenoid in here pulls the panel up, and the fuel pressure that's already in the injector is then able to squirt into the uh, cylinder. So on this high pressure common rail, since the pressure is already high, safety is a really big concern when you're working on these types of fuel systems because if you were to crack open a fuel line on this guy while the engine is running, that full actuation pressure would hit you square in the face or in the hand and cause some serious injury. So you got to be very careful when working with this type of fuel system and don't crack or open any components while the engine is running. And when you want to take lines and hoses off, you should shut the engine off and go grab a sandwich and wait a little bit before you come back and start moving lines and the system will bleed down. So where does this receive the high pressure fuel from? You're going to have a component called a high pressure fuel pump that is a gear pump and a high pressure actuator in one housing. That pump is going to pull fuel from the, the 
fuel tank, sometimes with the help of an electric lift pump, that is going to uh, basically pull fuel into the housing, then it's gonna send it through a filter back into the housing to the high pressure actuator sides. The high pressure actuators then try to squeeze that fuel, which pressurizes it. That fuel is then sent to what's called a high pressure rail, which we can see this right here is one of the high pressure rails. So that pressurized fuel is sent to this high pressure rail with lines going to high pressure connectors that run through the cylinder head. And then those high pressure connectors will then come directly into this port right here, delivering fuel into this injector already under intense pressure. This is the most popular type of fuel system that we are currently using. Because if you think about it, on this one, you're reliant on the total amount of stroke it has available, which limits the kind of fueling you can do with it. Um, this one, you're kind of limited by oil pressure. On this one, you're not really limited by anything. This thing can inject fuel, as much fuel as you want, at any time you want, at any time, right? If for some reason the computer decided it needed to inject fuel on the, say the exhaust stroke, maybe for regening the DPF, then all it has to do is send a signal and it can inject fuel on the exhaust stroke. It doesn't matter. It can inject precise amounts of fuel at a precise timing. Whenever you can do that, you're going to do a couple of key things. Number one, you're gonna be more fuel efficient. So you're gonna run with better fuel mileage with this fuel system. Number two, the better you control fueling and stoichiometric ratios and stuff like that, the better your emissions are gonna be coming out of that engine. So you can meet emission standards set by the EPA much easier with this type of fuel system. I would say the downside to it, it's a little bit more expensive than parts and components for the other fuel system. But those are your three, right? So you got high pressure common rail, you got Huey, and you have electronic unit injection. Those are the three you're most likely to run into unless you're dealing with a pre-1991 or so engine in which you can get back into the old mechanical ones back in the days before we had electronic diesel controls. Um, but if you're working on modern diesel engines, you're probably going to run into some variation of one of these three types of fuel systems. If you have any questions at all about how any of these three work, please say something in the comments. Uh, please also put in the comments any other kind of specialized videos that you would like to see about different types of uh, components on a diesel engine. And I'll be more than happy to uh, expand on the topic for you. As usual, please like and subscribe to the channel. Help me out. I appreciate it. I like the views um, and I like questions. So please, if you have a question, put it in the comments. I will answer it very quickly. Thank you for your time. See you on the flip side. New videos coming soon.